Okay. Welcome everyone. We are live. We'll wait a couple minutes as we start, uh, people start trickling in. Happy Friday. Welcome. We're so excited to have you. I'm Liza Kors, founder and CEO of Embello, an influencer marketing agency dedicated to home and lifestyle. Welcome to our Embello, our first ever Embello back to school series where we are diving into various social media topics and influencer marketing topics um, in the next uh, few Fridays. So I am so excited to be welcoming Anne Sage of City Sage today for our very first webinar, Embracing Instagram Reels, where we will be diving deep into video content creation and creating those amazing reels that obviously we're seeing are being pushed so much on Instagram. And you either love them, hate them, um, but we'll go through all of the details. So whether you are just getting started or haven't even posted your first reel, or you've already started incorporating them into your strategy and want to improve your skills and get tips from an expert like Anne, um, this webinar is definitely for you. So, I would love to introduce Anne, in case you are not familiar with her, definitely check her out at City Sage on Instagram, but a brief little bio on Anne. So Anne has been blogging since 2008, definitely an OG <laughs> content creator, as we like to call. Um, so with her signature smart yet stylish approach to interiors, entertaining, wellness, and more, Currently, she splits her time between maintaining her own social platforms, which we know is a full-time job in and of itself, and offering client services and social media strategy, art direction, and photo styling. She lives in Reno, Nevada, where she moved to from Los Angeles, where we both were. Now we're both in different cities. Um, and she is currently in the process of restoring her family's fourth generation historical home with her husband and beautiful daughter. If you've been following along, it's been really fun to see all of the updates you've made so far. So super, super excited to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited to be here. I love how you said when you were talking about reels, love them or hate them. For me, and I think a lot of us who have been just diving into reels, it's both. It's love, hate, <laughs> but we'll talk lots more about that. <laughs> Definitely. Amazing. And I also have our co-host, Clara Hanneberg, our partnerships director here at Embello, who will help out throughout the presentation. Hey guys. And so before we get started, I would love to thank our sponsor, Universal Furniture. Universal Furniture is the whole home destination for the professional interior design industry. Um, they truly have a variety, wide range of products for the professional design industry, everything from classic to traditional, uh, modern, transitional. They even have a coastal collection, which is really, really beautiful. Um, they have a collection with the Miranda Kerr which is stunning as well. So they're constantly, constantly coming out with new collaborations and products for designers. Um, they also have an incredible showroom at High Point. Um, that's where they're based. So they have a 115,000 square foot facility there. It truly is an experience. You have to experience it. You have to see it to experience it. Um, amazing uh, showroom there. They also do some incredible events during High Point Market. So they have a lot of really great presentations and events throughout High Point Market. I'll actually go ahead and include the link to their fall upcoming market events. They already have such an amazing lineup. Um, so we'll put it in the chat to make sure that you are able to see all of those amazing events. I mean, they even have a beauty bar. So, you know, <laughs> making sure that um, as you are at High Point Market, you know, you get touched up as well. So definitely a visit during fall if you are attending. So thank you so much to Universal. I just want to put in my own plug for Universal. They also have the best breakfast and lunch and their showroom 
is the best one where if like you're feeling super overwhelmed and you just need a mental health break, theirs is the one to go to. Yeah, there's something about their space that is sort of like nurturing yeah. and calming. Yeah. It's because their team is also so lovely and, and that energy just permeates throughout the entire showroom. Totally agree. Awesome. Okay, so hey. let's let's get started. I'm sure lots of people have. We actually got really great questions, you know, before um, as people signed up. So we'll make sure to answer them throughout the presentation and go through. If you have questions, feel free to include them here as well. Um, but starting with how you got started, I know you know a lot of people. It's, it's changing your strategy, essentially. You have to sort of make that leap. Um, and for you, I know that was a couple years ago and I'm sure it, it took a, a little convincing um, and you know a whole plan in place to get started. So tell me a little bit about you know, your shift to video. I know this first reel, we'll go ahead and play some of the reels as well, but was back in, in 2020, so about two years ago. Um, so tell us about that journey for you. Yeah. So I think at this point, this reel is almost three years old because it was, I want to say January of 2020, right before the whole world changed. Um, and I had been hearing and kind of reluctantly coming to terms with the fact that video was where things were headed even before Instagram introduced the reels feature. And then once it became clear that we were either going to have to get on board or not. I, I decided I'm just going to jump in, which is really the, the one take home. If anyone gets anything from this webinar, you just have to jump in and accept that there's going to be a learning curve. It's not going to look pretty in the beginning. Honestly, I'm almost three years into making reels and it still doesn't look pretty some days. Um, it's a new skill. It's a new way of seeing your content creation process. And like, it's like going to the gym, right? You're not going to get in shape by reading about going to the gym or watching other people go to the gym. The only way to get in shape is to go and do the work. And it's the exact same thing with any new feature, but reels in particular. So this was my very first one. And looking back at it now, I mean, if we, we can play it. Um, this was back when reels were only 15 seconds long. You could only make them 15 seconds long. And uh, they changed that to 30 seconds a few months later. But looking back, like there's a lot I would still do. Um, I think that there was a nice use of time lapse here. There was a variety of shots. I kind of bring people along on the process. So for a first try, it wasn't terrible. Certainly now there are things that I've learned that I would do differently. And a big call out um, is uh, the text that I used on this, like mm. don't use this font, just guys, don't use this font. No one can read it. <laughs> I can't read it now. People couldn't read it then. Don't use this font. Um, and then do, you do the fonts that they provide, or do you now do? Yeah. Like no. Okay. So what I do okay. is, um, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about this more. But my process is filming all of my shots with my iPhone camera editing in a third party app, mm -hmm. exporting and uploading to Instagram, and then using the text overlay in the Instagram app. Okay. And the reason I do that is I've heard, and here's a frustrating thing, everything is kind of hearsay when it comes to what works and what doesn't. Because it's you just have to try it for yourself. In the dark, right? But what I've heard is that um, the, the search and suggestion, um, component of the Instagram algorithm looks at and reads the text overlays that you're using. And if you're using a text overlay, that's been imported with your video, rather than adding it during the final edit process, then your content is not going to be searchable or suggestible, um, with that's the text interesting. Overlay. 
it's almost like they they want you to edit within the app so yeah. they're recognizing that and then honoring the people that that are so even just that small little <laughs> you know, I don't know if they're honoring anyone these days but <laughs> I do it that way just on the off chance that it helps right okay. like the the reason though that I don't edit entirely in the Instagram app is a it's crappy. Their edit tools are glitchy. They're not intuitive. They're clunky. And B, I've heard so many horror stories and experienced it myself as well of people who only had their video edited in Instagram and then it's something weird. happened to their drafts or for some reason they had to log out of their account and all their drafts got deleted. If you've at least edited the video component of your reel, in a third party app and I use Splice, that's the app that I use, um, then you've got the video, right? And re-uploading it and putting the new text overlay is not as painful as having to re-edit it completely. Okay. Yeah. So for this first reel, it sounds like, I mean, looking at it, it looks very similar to the content you currently yeah. create. So it looks like you had sort of a vision kind of strategy as yeah. to, you know, I mean, if you were just doing still photography and you go to video, you obviously, yes, you have to take the leap, but you also have to put, you know, some plan in place, which I know we'll talk about some of the, the sure. content planning and, and yeah. ideas and all of that. Yeah. Um, but other than the text that you mm -hmm. mentioned, anything Anything else that you? Uh, certainly um, something to think about that I didn't do in this very first reel is that when people are scrolling through their feed and being served a reel, they're only seeing that four fifths ratio that they see with still photos, but reels are a nine sixteenth ratio. And so when you're shooting and also putting your text on, you need to be thinking about keeping the important information, the most relevant information in that four fifths ratio rather than filling the whole screen for the nine sixteenth ratio. And you can see that like, you know, in this freeze frame that we have right here, what I'm doing is, is probably going to actually get cut off if someone is viewing this in their feed. Uh, and same thing with the text. It's entirely possible that it was bleeding off a little bit for people in there uh, who are scrolling through their feed. Of course, that's different if you're viewing your reels in the reels tab then everyone's getting that full 916th frame. But you have to be thinking about the people who are seeing your content in their, their main feed rather than viewing reels on the reels tab. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's really good condensing it kind of to that more center yeah. just, real estate. There. It's also just good advice, even if there weren't the ratio change, to be thinking about what is the center point of my video that's where people's eyes are going to be. That's where the most important stuff should be. Don't spread it all out all over. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think we can go to the next yeah, one. Yeah, let's then. do the next one. So this one is like, I would never post this now. Okay. Um, I love it. Why not? It makes me cry. Like yeah. it's my little baby girl. I mean, aside from the fact that there's a very brief moment where we can see her private parts and I should probably delete this <laughs> from my feed. Um, you know, what I learned the hard way in the first six to eight months of doing reels is that the audience you're acquiring through reels is less forgiving of going outside your niche. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because I love so many different aspects of lifestyle content. I love interiors. I love fashion. I love food, entertaining, wellness, all of that. But the new followers that you're gaining through reels are following you because they liked the reel they saw, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you popped up a few times in, in their reels tab or their suggested tab and they liked what they saw. If you then give them something different than what they first saw, like a total departure, they're gonna be like, who's this person? Why am I following them? you haven't gained the trusting relationship with those new followers that you maybe have with the ones that you acquired through years and years of posting still photos. 
So they're going to just leave. They're going to unfollow, which mm-hmm. means if you are posting to core content, you're posting to core content. If you are posting mom content, you're posting mom content. There are ways to cross it over. And I've done that sometimes successfully, but for, in my case, it's mom content in the context of decor. It's fashion Mm -hmm. content in the context of decor. So that's why when it comes to your real strategy, you have to be running everything through the filter of what is my niche? What is my specific uh, topic that I am focusing on? Mm -hmm. And that's been a bummer on one hand, but it's also forced me to be creative within that structure in the same way that writing a poem with a preset structure can be just as creative and challenging as writing a poem when you don't have any structure, right? Mm -hmm. It's all just different ways of thinking. No, that's really great to know um, that you saw that on your end. Yeah. And and I saw it, like I said, the hard way, because I would be like, here's my hack for making the best green smoothie. And here's my closet organization. And, and like I was not seeing the growth and the um, views that I was hoping to because I was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And that's why even looking at your stats on your posts too can be helpful as well. Seeing completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we love baby halo, but maybe. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Look, yeah. Um, So this, this one was really popular. Um, Yeah kitchen organization, of course, Mm -hmm. we know that your kitchen Mm -hmm. always, you know, was well received on your page, still photography. Yes. So for this one, this is a great example of um, one thing I love about reels, which is that you can get so much more content out of one thing than you can when you're focusing solely on still photos. You know, take a kitchen, for example, a kitchen in still photos, you can get a bunch of different angles. You can style it differently. You can go close up on, on pictures of how you're organizing your pantry or whatever. But when you're doing video, you can slice and dice the same topic so many more ways. And here's a great example of that just talking about my three favorite tools for pantry organization. That could be one reel. The second reel could be a time-lapse of doing the pantry organization. The third reel could be a really satisfying five second before and after with a snappy transition of the pantry organization. The fourth reel could be a humorous, here's what it looked like before kind of a reel, right? Like that's four ideas off the top of my head for just one a very narrow topic. You know, the Mm -hmm. fifth one could be uh, someone asks you in your comments, tell me more about the drawers that you used. And then you can use the reply as a real feature to just zoom in and talk about here are the dimensions of the drawers. Here's where I bought them. Here's what I thought about when I was planning this, right? Like there's so Mm. much more you can get out of one small thing. That's a really good point. That's great for like, all of us because it's this, this starving machine that we're constantly feeding with content, right? And especially in the interior design world where projects start to finish, take months and years, like we can't all be waiting around for that beautiful before and after carousel swipe. We have to be creating content along the way, building our loyal audience who is then going to be so thrilled when they finally do get those big, beautiful finished project shots. I love what you said regarding taking a question that was asked from your audience and turning that into a reel, because I know we'll go through you know, content ideas, but sometimes I know that was a question we received is how do you come up with, you know, what content to put together? And I'm sure sometimes it's like, okay, what do I talk about? What do I shoot video about? So even just looking at what people are asking you and that's what people are interested in. And so making content, answering, you know, those questions. Yeah. I mean, you should always, your first thought when you're making a reel is what's valuable to my audience 
And if they're literally telling you what's valuable to them, i.e. the answer to this question they have, I mean, honestly, I think people should be doing one reel a week answering one of those FAQs. And the beauty of those is that most of the time you can create them using video footage you've already shot for other things. Mm -hmm. So that's a really fast, easy one to do. How do you, so this video obviously has like full shots, close-up yes. shots. I know we talk about shooting video of everything and then, yeah. you know, going back in and kind of editing, but how do you know what close-up <laughs> shots to do? Well, like, yeah, that's definitely where practice comes in. Okay. And um, there's kind of two different ways that I'll shoot. One, for something like this, where I have a very specific vision of what are the three things I'm going to talk about? It's, you know, the jars, the shelf dividers, the later in the video, there's little, little spice canisters. And so I'm thinking about, okay, so my shots are going to be a close up of each item and then a, like a moving shot demonstrating how I use it. So I'll go through and get those shots one by one. Of course, for, um, a bigger project, to take an example, I recently redid my daughter's room. I can't exactly predict every single reel I'm gonna wanna make. I can't predict exactly what the shot order in those reels is gonna be. And so over the last three years, I've gotten a pretty good sense for what are the useful shots that I need to be sure I get? What are the nice to have shots that I may use? I may not, but I'll be glad to have them if I want them. And then what are the shots that I just probably won't use and shouldn't waste my time on? And that might be different for everyone, depending on exactly what your content strategy and your niche is. But generally speaking with a project like a room makeover, you know, make sure to get nice slow pans through the before of the room, um, get kind of like gentle movement shots close up on details like if you're going to feature a light that you're swapping out right like get a nice slow before shot so that then you can transition to an after shot just thinking about what are all the things that are going to be changing in the final result what is my process like and how can I be capturing the key moments along the way essentially film as much content as you can when in doubt, and, and don't feel bad if you don't yeah. use it like you almost have to get over the fact yeah. that maybe you'll use oh, yeah. half of it but you'll yeah. be happy that you shot it because you don't have to go back and then like yeah. reset everything up again honestly it's like uh whenever I'm on set styling photos I always bring more than I know I'm gonna need because there's nothing worse than being on set and being like oh if only I had brought that one perfect vase that would have completed this vignette it's the same with video you can't go back <laughs> I can't rewind time to before the room was demoed so just get as much as I can on the off chance that I want it because I can always delete it or in yeah. my case buy another terabyte of iPhone storage <laughs> <laughs> okay so key takeaways you have to just do it jump right in you'll learn as you kind of go yeah. definitely though have a strategy in place um making sure you keep to your core um mm -hmm. you know topics um and also give yourself permission to those for those to evolve because it's always a dialogue with your audience. And if you're if you keep hammering something that's not landing for them, then that's your sign to to switch it up and try something different. Are you? I know we talked about this yesterday. Um, are you even posting still images anymore? Yeah. Is that even a thing? Yeah, I mean, that's a whole other conversation because now this past summer. Um, you know, I, I spent the first six months of this year really honing my real strategy, building a ton of momentum. Finally, by June, seeing some numbers that I was so proud of because it really felt like all the effort from my work was paying off. And then Instagram switched a bunch of things up on the back end, which they love to do. And now reels are performing a tenth of what they were getting before. And so just talking to colleagues, we've been saying things like, all right, 
you know, maybe what it looks like is posting a reel and a carousel every day so that we're covering our bases. Maybe the algorithm wants us to be doing more still photos, using more of the different features again. So yes, I am back to trying to post still imagery. And the good news is that I have, you know, years and years and years of still images to call on to just yeah. create, create carousels and teachable moments through still photos. Because people still do like still photos. The yeah. algorithm isn't feeding them to people, but when they see them, they're happy to. Mm -hmm. And that's good to know too, for people that might yeah. be starting off. Don't that. abandon your still photos. Just also do reels. Just do more work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just do more work. Just work harder at home. <laughs> well, we're going to try to help you. I know one of the questions that came in was how, how do I make it less, um, overwhelming, you know, to, Totally. to and and it can be overwhelming a video you, you, all of a sudden you're a video editor producer you're an yeah. actor you know right and yeah. in it so um so hopefully we'll go through so now we're looking at your top performing reels and so yeah. I'm sure people want to have tips as to yeah. why do they perform so well um mm -hmm. so let's really dissect these and yeah, get nitty-gritty <laughs> <laughs> all right I mean I love that this is one of my top performing reels because um I've been working with Krypton to support their upholstery brand for so 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 long and being able to just blow their brand out of the water with this frankly kind of silly random reel that is what like five seconds long um, that for me was so satisfying. And um, the fact that it was a branded reel that did this well, which is rare, right? Like usually as I'm sure we've all experienced, branded content does not generally perform as well as non-branded content because the audience like smells an ad. Um, so many reasons why I think this did well. It's kind of weird, right? Like the look on my face is a little creepy. And <laughs> um, it's obvious what I'm about to do. And so it's shocking, got, right? It's shocking. People got hooked in by like this train wreck. I can't tear my eyes away type mentality. Um, it's short. The, the good news and bad news is that the best performing reels on the whole are five to 12 seconds long because we all have the attention spans of goldfish now. Um, <laughs> But, but also other things that I think really resulted in this doing well is I just give people a taste of the information and then the bulk of the information is in the caption, hmm. right? I'm like, there's, there's just like, no, I don't worry. Go to the caption and read why. And then while people are reading the caption, the reel is playing like six times, seven times more. So that's one reason why short reels do so well is because they loop in people's feeds or people have to rewatch them to get the full information or impact of them. That's not to say don't do longer reels. Mm -hmm. It's just me saying, be sure you are incorporating short reels into your content calendar. Well, that would um, be good news for people that it probably is a little bit of a breath of fresh air to hear like I don't have to create these super long video content it could be five to 12 seconds long and those might perform better anyway they and then like you said it's strategic and then it gets people to read the caption which is where you know sometimes with branded content obviously that's where we tag you know yeah. the sponsors and all of that I mean I think for me watching this I was like okay it didn't get on the sofa. Where did all that wine go? <laughs> yeah. And that's another point about this reel is that it, it left people wondering, right? It left them wondering where'd the wine go? And so many of the questions or, or comments that I got were like, but what about your rug? Um, I got a lot of comments because once something goes viral and this one I think was close to 7 million views. Uh, once something goes viral, I will say that going viral is not fun. Going viral is a pain in the butt because you start getting fed to millions of people who are not your followers. That's where you start getting exposed to trolls and jerks. And so a lot of the comments on this were like, that's not an Aperol spritz or um, 
your eyes look weird, right? Like stuff that had nothing to do with the reel itself. Um, but that's what comes with the fame, right? Just like with any. This is the price of my fame. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but so like that, that is one thing that I think, you know, everyone has this goal. I want to go viral. The people who followed me off of this, A, I don't even know if I got that many followers from going viral with this reel, but B, it's like, I don't want the jerks and the trolls following me. And when you go viral, that's who really starts flooding in. Like, I would rather have a reel that performs solidly, that is representative of my expertise and is gaining me followers who are following me for my expertise than something that goes viral and gets a bunch of random comments that have nothing to do with interiors. Mm -hmm. So um, qu quality versus quantity. Yeah, quality. And then also not aiming you know to always have this top performing reel like it's okay to have nice and steady because at the end of the day it could actually be really who your target customer is yeah. anyway yeah exactly um so other things to point out about this reel is by this point i had learned my lesson about keeping the information visually and verbally in that four fifths frame, right? Like there's nothing along the bottom. There's nothing along the top. Anyone viewing this is going to get a really concentrated hit of information in the center of the frame. Um, I think that's kind of everything I have to say about that. Oh, and the last thing, one more thing is that um, this was, I think looking back, a good use of an audio that was trending at the time in a way that was relevant to my niche. And I think that we'll, there's a part where we'll talk about this more later, but trending audio is good to use, but not if you can't mold it in a way that fits your niche. And this is a good example of how I did that. Yes, I definitely wanna talk about music as we go through, um, because I know that was a question that we had you know, just, and even with this, so talking through this, we'll play it really Immediately, well. no. Immediately well. no. Immediately no. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I see mm -hmm. what I needed to see. <laughs> okay, so talking about this one, oh you know, I think anything that obviously sparks conversation, right? Like some people that do like the karate chop, people that yeah. don't, you'll get people like going back and forth, but the audio and I know this is a question that people ask is how do you find music and how do you find even audio like this like who's the first person that found this audio that someone you know? on TikTok. someone <laughs> on TikTok and that's the truth all trending audio starts on TikTok which is you know TikTok has a campaign running I've seen their TV commercials where the tagline literally is it starts on TikTok and that is a very not so subtle dig at Instagram reels by saying like all those trends on Instagram reels they started three weeks ago on TikTok okay so someone so, on TikTok found someone, this it made um, itself to Instagram some 19 year old who spends all day every day on her phone found this audio and it blew up and then it migrated to Instagram. So the way I find audios to use, um, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, I really struggle with TikTok as, a, as a, a consumer. Like I'm posting over there, I'm trying to build out an audience, but I don't spend time there scrolling, looking for trending audios, trying to get like, the hot take on what the kids are doing on TikTok so that I can migrate it to Instagram. I'm not that on top of things in my life. The way I find my audios is just going to that Reels tab and scrolling, seeing what's trending and saving the ones that I feel like maybe I could make them work for me. And that's both just straight up songs, but then also these kind of like you know, quotes and um, voiceovers and those types of things. And um, and then do you like come up with a top? So you heard this audio yeah. and then you'll think of different topics that can maybe go. Yeah. Okay. In this case, 
I knew that this one would be a, a one that one that would pretty easily translate into an interiors topic, right? Like everybody's got that immediately no moment that they have about something interiors related. Um, I think I came up with this like on a Saturday morning or something and filmed it in 20 minutes and posted it that morning. Um, uh, which is why like it's all shadowy and dark. The video quality on this one leaves much to be desired. Um, but it was one of your top performing But it was one anyway. of my top ever. Yeah. And the reason for that definitely is the controversy component on this one. Um, when it went viral, most of the people were, were saying like, if someone came over to my house and judged my house like you are, I would kick them out. Which is like, of course I don't go to people's house and do that obviously I silently judge you in my head <laughs> okay kidding no um it, it was people who thought who like got up in arms about this and um again I don't know that I got a lot of super good quality followers from this the other comment I got a lot was about like my my sweatsuit outfit like people saying like someone who's dressed like that shouldn't be making a comment about how my house looks right <laughs> but this is it's really funny right like yeah. it I love kind of taking the piss out of interiors and how seriously people take it it's just design guys like I love it it's my life but let's laugh at it too mm -hmm. and um if that brings me to a point about you know, your brand identity. For some people, humor is not their brand identity. For some people, there's like reverence and beauty and aesthetic moments. You're probably not going to be making reels like this. And that's great. Don't make reels like this if humor and irreverence is not part of your brand identity. So don't worry about saving these types of audio tracks. You should be saving the trending audio tracks and using the trending audio tracks that are like, a dreamy moment or a five yep. second peaceful piano loop, right? Like yep. there's enough different audios out there for all your different brand needs. Yeah. I think one reason why people might also get scared as to, you know, diving into reels is because they feel like they do have to produce right. content like this in order yeah. to be top performing. And they're like, yeah oh my gosh, I don't, you know, want to be, you know, in front of the camera. I know we're going to talk about that, like being in front of the camera, um, which is important, but you don't have to be silly or be, mm -hmm. you know, funny staying to your own brand, like you said. Totally. Yeah, completely. And there's, yeah. there's some, and I don't know if we want to follow up um, with a list for, for people. I can certainly recommend interiors creators who are doing it all these different ways, right? The ones who are doing these beautiful moments, sometimes they're in front of the camera, sometimes they're not. And the ones who are doing more of like the lighthearted take. There's mm -hmm. there's for everyone. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure everyone will appreciate that. Okay, so let's uh, move into the next one and see if there was anything else that we might have missed. Your, your kitchen renovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not renovation, kind of a DIY. Uh, yeah, this was like a flip. Um, so the interesting thing about this one was this is like an auxiliary reel that I made months after making the initial before and after reel. This was again, I think me on a Saturday morning thinking, oh crap. Like I have nothing to post today. What can I post using existing footage? So I quickly, I think that I even used the same video that I had edited to talk about the process of the facelift. And I just put different text overlay on it. And mm. this text overlay was like, a breakdown of how long it took us and what took us the longest. And um, people love to know that information, cost, like cost, cost, cost. Information, time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, even, just pulling back the curtain. Yeah, even a question we received um, as well is 
And you kind of mentioned on some of these reels, so it might depend for you, but how long does it take you to create a reel from beginning to end? If you have an average or- There's no average. There's no average. Yeah. Like I said, this was something I had already edited and I just put different text over on it. So it was like 20 minutes. Maybe the original video took me an hour to edit just because I had so much footage from this (laughs) hundred hour kitchen facelift Mm -hmm. Uh, and coming up with, you know, an edit that told the whole story, but told it quickly and used the best snippets of visual information from all that footage. So that's where it takes time. What I will say is that, you know, if you've shot a whole bunch of stuff so that you can talk about the same project in many different ways. It's like there's, um, you know, kind of a curve for how quickly it will take you. That first reel about the project will take you longer, but then the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth, like you get faster and faster because you're more familiar with your footage because you might be able to reuse the same edit or or just like reorganize the clips in some way. So that's Mm -hmm. another uh, reason why I just love finding different ways to talk about the same thing because the more you talk about it the easier it gets to create the content and Mm -hmm. people don't seem to tire of it because you got to remember not everyone is seeing everything that you do that's true this you know this was maybe the fourth time I talked about this kitchen project but for a lot of people it was the first time they were seeing it Mm -hmm. so don't think that Mm -hmm. you're oversaturating a topic essentially because not everyone's going to see it and it's more content for you to be able to okay okay so let's move into sponsored posts Um, we'll go through these pretty quickly because I definitely want to make sure we go through some other tips that you have yeah yeah I don't even know what time is it how are we doing on time we are 42 minutes in so we have about 20 20 minutes left so we do (laughs) we do need a um we'll go through these pretty quickly, but I guess the main thing I wanted to go through with sponsored content is, is how in your process, how they differ in the content creation. You mentioned earlier, they're not always the, you know, top performing just because people can smell an ad. Yeah. Um, And obviously that's a conversation that we at Embello with our campaigns we always talk to our brands about really letting the influencer have creative freedom yes. because they know what um, resonates best with their audience. But yes. quickly here, you know, any tips on, on sponsored content? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest tip is the, the biggest tip that I always give, which is it has to have value for the viewer. It can't just be the ad. There has to be a takeaway for them whether they're going to buy the product or not. And so in this case, um, you know, when I think about value, there's different ways to bring value to, to your content. Entertainment is hundred percent a valid type of value. And this one, that entertainment component came from the satisfying before and after that happens in the first couple seconds of the video. But then also in this video, I, I always think about how can I teach, right? Cause I have decades of experience by now in the world of interiors. How can I teach the person who's watching this so that they feel like they come away having seen my video and learned something. And so this one was, um, kind of like honing in on the three different types of uh, accent tables that I used in this living room makeover and and leaving people with this tidbit around like, oh, okay, I should be thinking about accent tables for different functions and different sizes. And here's what to consider when I'm shopping for accent tables. Oh, and all of these great accent tables happen to be from All Modern, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The brand, obviously the brand wants to come first, But as a creator, the brand should be like the back of your mind when you're thinking about your content. And then you layer the brand story over top of that value that you're bringing to people. And whenever I've worked with brands who micromanage and don't understand that, that's when the content really just like crashes and burns all modern. I loved working with them because they were like, we trust you. We love what you do. We know you've got our back. And of course I did. Um, 
right. Br- brands that micromanage, it's, it's just like everything falls flat and the audience picks up on it. And then even moving into, I think the other two here, there is a flooring renovation mm-hmm. that you did for yeah. Halo um, yeah. as well. And then the, the next one was also uh, regarding new window treatments. Yeah, window treatments, yep. That you did. So always kind of that before yeah. and after, I think. You yeah, know, process. Um, but- it doesn't have to be a full before and after. Mm-hmm. There just has to be, you think about when you're watching a movie, there has to be progress from one point to another. You're telling a story. Here's how it was before. Here's how it is now. That now might be a finished product, but that now could also be like, here's how it's going so far. Um, mm-hmm. in, the, in these examples, it happens to be full before and after, but that's not like, obviously, like we said before, you're not always going to have that full before and after, and you still have to be creating content. This one I loved, like, I just, I watched this one over and over again myself. Cause it was just, <laughs> it was a skill that I had just learned myself and had my mind blown. I was like, wait a minute, I've been doing interiors for how long? And I've never trained my drapes. What? People need to know about this. So I was bringing like a a ton of excitement myself. And I was also thinking about like, okay, this is something I've just learned. How do I distill it into a few short clips so that anyone watching this 24 second video, and here's an example of a longer one that did really well because Mm -hmm. it was so valuable and educational. How can I teach this to other people? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. And that's what I love about video. Like I'll just say, love it or hate it. The thing that I really appreciate about it is the opportunity to teach and enrich people's lives is so palpable when you really are embracing video. Yes. Okay. Thank you for walking us through those examples. I think it was really great to be able to show everyone what yeah, you do. I think we covered a lot of, of yes. all of notes already. Yeah. I mean, I know shooting everything, obviously the before and after a quick note on time-lapse, mm-hmm. you know, not shooting in that. Do you use then? Um, yeah. App? The editing app that I use, which is called what? Spice. Um, then you can speed up or slow down. And the reason that I don't shoot in the time-lapse function on my phone is because then it can only be a time-lapse. Whereas if I've shot the whole process, then I can take chunks of it and speed them up or slow them down and use them in all of these different ways. But if I've shot it as a time-lapse, also the video quality is just poorer. Um, that's all it can ever be for me. It's not as versatile. So if it takes you 30 minutes with your phone on a tripod while you hang curtains, then so be it. Yep. Okay. And then of course, ideas, right? People are always like, how do I come up with ideas? So as, as they kind of come up, writing them down, um, how, how, so you mentioned here, how are some ways that you generate ideas for your content? So that kind of goes to the next point, which is just having categories like buckets, right? And that's the same as any content strategy, just applied to reels. So I might have my buckets for a week of content might be a funny lip sync, um, a quick before and after, a longer before and after that shows the process. Um, You know, those are just examples off the top of my head. And then as I'm just going through my day and going through my projects that I'm working on, I'm thinking about like, all right, what what type of reel haven't I posted yet this week? Because I'll be totally honest, I'm not the person who just batches a bunch of content and has a plan a month ahead. I'm very fly by night. Um, How far in advance do you plan? Like a week in advance? (laughs) Like not at all, <laughs> like, okay. and, but, but I think that that is, um, you know, that is a, a lot to do with knowing how I work versus how someone else might work. I'm very much motivated by the inspiration of the moment and what is interesting to me in that moment. Granted, that's not to say that I don't have a list at the beginning of the week of like, here's what I think I might want to post. But it's Mm -hmm. not like I've edited all seven reels that far in advance. And if something else seems more interesting to me, or, you know, if I see a fabulous audio and it cracks me up and I'm like, I have to use this one somehow, that gives me space to just kind of do whatever. Other people 
that type of spontaneity does not work for their personality. And so they're better off having a spreadsheet or if you're running a business and you have a social media person, obviously you need to be planning and batching more. Um, mm -hmm. But regardless, I always have like that list in my notebook of ideas for what I'm going to be making. And I write them down as, as soon as they come to my head. Um, and then I kind of workshop them in my head too. And you mentioned here, you know, you follow different accounts, obviously, to generate ideas. Are yeah. there some accounts that you uh, love watching? Uh, honestly, uh, and this this is kind of a, a broader point to that one. Um, one of my favorite Reels creators is in the food world. And so that that I think is a really important take home is don't just look to interior people look to anyone you think is doing reels well because there's always something you can be learning and applying to how you're doing reels her name is um nicole and her account is kale junkie and she her account has just exploded from doing reels and she's also got a huge tiktok following now but she does such a good job of teaching and entertaining and making it digestible and making you want to follow her to learn more um she just kind of like checks all the boxes and she does a great job with the the aesthetics and the visuals too like she hasn't sacrificed her look mm -hmm. uh, by becoming mostly a video creator awesome and then you mentioned here, people love a series, yes. right? Getting them to come yes. back. I think a great example of a series that I saw recently is our good friend House of Hipsters, who yep. I think she's watching. <laughs> um, and you should definitely tune in for her TikTok webinar. What is it next week? Next Friday. Yep. I was going to mention uh, she's, she's going to dive into TikTok. She is the savviest, like she thinks about strategy like no one else I've ever met. She's brilliant. But a recent series she did was um, things that are dating your home. And uh, I mean, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but they looked pretty low effort to be making because it was just like the same intro shot every single time, which is good. It's a series. You want it to feel consistent. Right. Uh, episode to episode. And then there was just like a lot of stock photos. She wasn't using a ton of video. It was more like kind of slideshow format with photos that either she had from her projects or products, photos that she pulled offline. Um, but I was absolutely tuning in for that one. I was like grabbing my popcorn. I'm like, oh, what's the thing that's dating what's my What's the home? next oh, one that she's going to talk about? <laughs> so smart. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So then moving into, bad, by the way, is he like, He's like, Hi, James Bond. <laughs> uh, so moving into jumping on social trends. Yes. So some, some do's and don'ts here that we can go through. Yeah, we'll go through these quickly because they're pretty straightforward. Like, um, like we said, don't jump on every single trend. It might not be right for your brand. If you're just making the video to be a part of the trend, then there's no deeper value that you're bringing to it, then that is off-putting to people and people see through it. Um, like I also said, the way that I kind of get ideas is by scrolling through my Reels feed, saving audio that I think I can use in a way that fits with my content strategy, um, looking at what other people are doing, but like, from a distance, right? I never want it to feel like I'm copying what other people are doing, um, but it's nice to see how other people are using the tool of Reels to then get inspired for how I can do it. Um, yeah, if you have the stomach for it, spend some time on TikTok. Honestly, I feel like I'm gonna have a seizure every time I open up TikTok. I'm 100% too old for the app, uh, but other people love it. Other people, that's their jam. If you can take a look at what those trending audios are on TikTok, because maybe you could be the person who jumps on it for Instagram. I don't know. That's never been me. Um, yeah. And then trending audios. Um, I think it was the case more before Instagram changed things with the algorithm that a tr using a trending audio could really help boost your reel. Full disclosure, I have not seen any benefits from using trending audio in terms of gaining views. Mm. Um, but 
maybe it makes uh, it go other more value. viral. Yeah, there's other value to using trending audio. One, it means that instead of having to scroll through a hundred possible songs, you can just go to your reels tab and be like, all right, here's a song that works well enough and it's trending. So what could it hurt to use it? Right. No, I mean, I've spent the one reel I created was like, <laughs> which song should I do? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. What? Yeah. It's, it's not worth your time to look for the perfect song if you don't have it saved already. Any song will do because truth be told, 80% of people watch reels with the sound off. I think that's a point you make here too, yeah. right? Or maybe in the next one. But or maybe the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, so repurposing content, you know, we definitely talked a lot about yeah. that already. So um, you can definitely be making videos from your still photos. Um, do it sparingly because the point of video is to do video. The point of video is not to make a million still photo slideshows. However, there are opportunities when it does feel appropriate. Um, there might be a trending audio, like here's example one. There might be a trending audio where the trend is show cuts of still photos to this song. And there are even reels out there that are like the tutorial for how to do this reel, right? Where it's like, edit each still image 0.2 seconds, boom, you've got your reel. Um, so that's one of the things that I might be looking for when I'm scrolling through what's trending right now is, oh, here's a great opportunity to use some still photos. Another one, um, and I wish we had, I, it was, this is my oversight, I did not link to this one. There was an audio a while back that was like, uh, a man saying, so you're an artist? And then the person being asked the question goes, yeah. Um, I think everyone has heard that one. <laughs> yeah, that one, but it was a great way to use still photos because, but I will say the, the intro to the video still had to be a video. It had to be you like thinking about like, am I an artist or in this case, an interior designer? And then, then you're like, yeah. And then that's when you cut to a series of still photos of your work. Mm -hmm. Um, so just thinking about how can I repurpose still photos, but in a video way, quote unquote. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here oh. it is. Yeah. So you're an artist. Yeah. Are you good at it? Yeah. 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 That's a good example of good example. showing this the still sure. images because a lot of people are like, what do I do? Especially designers, you know, yeah, they have so much tough. of that. So tough. Um, so that's a good example of it. Okay, so insights for garnering better engagement. Yes. So you talked about best performing reels, five uh -huh. to twelve seconds long. Great news for people. And you that should be doing both. You should be okay. doing short ones to catch people, longer ones to to build their trust in your expertise, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. And definitely those first two to three seconds of the video, if you don't have them by then, they're just going to scroll right past. So that's why in this example that we just showed of um, the, the one where I did employ still images, I still started with video because movement and like a human face, that is inherently more catchy and a better hook than just a static image. Okay. Yeah. Um, this next point is so, so important when you're editing, it's gotta be tight, like practice your edits. Don't post something until your edit is nice and clean. Make sure your text isn't bleeding off the edge. Make sure if you are doing a lip sync, like your lip sync needs to be spot on because I'm sure we've all seen that reel where the lip sync is just a little off and we're like, Oh my gosh, this person is a total loser. <laughs> like scroll. Get a look like right. Those small, small details, when they're when they're in place, people don't think about them. But when they're off, it's just like design. If something's off, that's all you see. And it affects people's trust in you as a creator. And so they won't follow. They might unfollow. Like you just seem obnoxious to them. You seem unprofessional. Mm -hmm. um, Next point, get in front of the camera. You don't have to be in front of the camera for every reel, but I definitely recommend like at least once a week, 
be on the camera in some way. That doesn't mean you're dancing or lip syncing or like pointing at text. Maybe it just means that it's a time lapse of you doing some process. We're seeing your physical presence in your content because ultimately social media is about the trust and the relationship that your followers have with you. That means they want to see you. Um, and then for voiceover or spoken words, so important to use captions because uh, most people don't watch with the sound on. Like I know my husband, if he accidentally turns the sound on his his Instagram, he's like, ah, oh God. <laughs> but sometimes people have it off because they're like scrolling in bed. Yep. <laughs> yep. They're in bed, they're putting a baby to sleep. Right at work and they don't want people to know they're on Instagram. Like there's so, so many reasons why we don't watch with the sound. Um, so having captions, especially, especially if the take home of your reel is dependent on what's being said, it, that take home needs to be available to people, even if they have the sound off. So last, I know we're like so close running out of time here, but so I, I use we're light. Okay. We're good. We're, we're, we're on time, but we're yeah. almost to the end. We'll go through a couple questions at the end and then we'll be okay. good. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, we sort of talked about this before. I use Splice. The free version is great. Um, I've played around with other editing apps and Splice has like no bugs. Other free editing apps that I've used have bugs. Um, it's intuitive. It's easy to learn. Like anything, it will take practice to figure out your way around it. Um, but of the ones I've tried, it's the best. And um, I already made this point about don't edit your reels in the Instagram app. Just don't. Just don't. Don't even go there. Just Do don't. it outside. Okay. Uh, when it comes to sound and editing to sound. I was going to ask you this because when you were like, the lip sync has to be right on with the music. And I was like, oh my God, how do you, I know. how do you do I know. So here's what I do. And it's funny. I've always thought this was obvious, but then I taught it to a friend who's like a very savvy on top of it content creator just this week. And she's like, you just blew my mind. So hopefully this will be the mind blowing final take home for everyone. Yes. I import the sound into splice and do my edit, my lip sync there cut my like before and after snappy transition for the beat drop, right? Like there's lots of ways to use sound to good effect. And I still worry and think about that, even though I know most people don't have the sound on for the 20% who do have the sound on, I want it to be a satisfying sound experience, right? So what I do, you copy paste the link for the Instagram reel that has the sound you want to use into a converter that turns it into an MP3. I do that on my laptop, mainly because I don't know how to do it on my phone. Okay. I have tried. <laughs> okay, so you're taking I, yeah. that link I'm from the audio that you like. I copy paste into, this is one example of a site that does it. There's a, if you just Google uh, Instagram to MP3, you'll get some sites to do it for you. So then I download the MP3 onto my laptop, laptop then I airdrop it to my phone and a menu pops up that says, where do you want to save this audio? And one of the options is Splice. So I choose Splice, which means it's saved in my music library in my Splice editing app. And then when I'm editing my video, I just go to music, imported sounds, and it's there for me. Then, when I go to post the video in Instagram, right? Cause I'm doing my text overlays in Instagram. I've saved the reel that I copy pasted that sound from. And I use the, use this audio feature. And I use the audio that's native to Instagram but I've edited to that sound outside of Instagram. Does that make sense? And we could like, I don't know, film a little walkthrough of this for people and send it out to the emails of everybody who's watching now. Like I can screen record it. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes me five seconds to do now. Okay. It's Cause it, it sounds, it sounds complicated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's because I'm, I'm verbalizing it rather than just showing you what to do, but trust me, this makes life 
so, so easy. Amazing. Okay. I wish well, we had four more hours. <laughs> I know we could talk about video content and reels forever. Um, we actually don't, we covered all of the questions that were mm -hmm. asked really in the Q and A. So I think we did a really good job on covering all of the different topics. I think it's a great idea of what you mentioned, you know, sending a little video. Um, we'll also send the link to the uh, universal high point market events. And you even mentioned, you know, some of the influencers that yeah. you follow or, you know, can follow for different, um, you know, yeah. ideas oh, and categories and things like that. So yeah. amazing. And we are also recording this. So we'll send this as a recording as well. Okay. So people can watch it. And if there's a point they really wanted to dig into, we're able to do that as well. So we'll be sure to follow up. And I just want to thank Anne for her time. Everyone, thank you I will so say, much. Um, if there were questions you that came up for you while you were watching, and I did not answer them, please feel free to just DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to talk more about this because I know it's been something that causes people a lot of stress and consternation. Um, and for me, certainly it has as well, but it can also be really, really fun and a really nice way to expand your offerings for your audience. I think even just knowing that even for you, someone that people see that they're like, oh my God, she's killing it on you know, yeah. Instagram reels that you too struggled through the same things at the beginning, still do. Still today. It doesn't go away. Does not go away. It always feels like we're chasing our tails. That's just part of this world. Yep. So, so welcome to the craziness, but welcome thank you. Everyone. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks, thank you, guys. Anne. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Universal. And happy Friday. Have a great, great weekend.